It's Brandon Dawson with Building Billions, and today I have a business partner of mine with me, Ephraim. I'm going to let him introduce himself, where he's from. I know you'll enjoy this episode of Building Billions because Ephraim and I have been working together uh, now for three years. Yeah. And uh, and we're excited about what we're going to be talking about. Ephraim, introduce yourself. Tell everybody what you do. So my name is Ephraim Epstein. Uh, my company is Fit Cybersecurity, and what we do is managed IT services as well as cybersecurity services monitoring environments, making sure that organizations don't have a data breach. And that just, so, so how many businesses do you think are operating on a day-to-day -day basis where they're not even paying attention to their data? I would say the vast majority of businesses are probably not focused on cybersecurity. They're really just focused on building the business, which they should be, right? Uh, you, the, the intention is to grow your business. But unfortunately, the climate that we're in, there's so many criminal elements in the cybersecurity space that you're seeing it on the news. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many more small, medium businesses that are just getting hammered and destroyed in the cybersecurity space. And the, the results are, are pretty bad. So. Because the people, uh, hacking them, stealing yeah. your data. Yeah. And then if you're a, if you're a small business and somebody hacks into your system and they steal your data and you weren't doing the things you needed to do to protect your data, what's the risk and liability for that small business? It's becoming huge. If you look at the data and the stats, the majority of businesses that have a major data breach don't survive after three years. They're, they're not around. Um, that might not mean they went bankrupt, but it could mean they got acquired. Something is wrong in the business. Um, if you're an IT director or CIO, chances are you won't be there in six months. I think it's like a 90% uh, likelihood that you won't like, no longer be with the organization. And so uh, there's a lot of risk. And what's the complexity if I if I was like, I have data and, uh, because I think a lot of customers get pissed off if, yeah, somebody steals their data and start using it to, to pretend they're that customer and charging on their credit cards or using yeah. that information for other things. They blame the company that didn't protect the data, right? Absolutely. And in fact, there's uh, something called duty of care that is bigger in the environment now more than ever. It's been around for a long time, but you're actually seeing, um, in court cases, lawsuits, things like that that duty of care is coming up and it's just growing and it's getting legs finally. It's not just a, an ethical thing, it's becoming a legal thing that as an organization, um, you have huge liability risk now in a lawsuit and you will probably lose if you didn't take the reasonable steps, which is open for some interpretation, but generally if they see that you didn't take reasonable steps and document them on how to protect the data, you're, you're gonna be on the losing end. And so that's what, uh, because we partnered, Cardo Ventures and Fit partnered yeah. uh, two years ago. Yeah. And uh, with the with the idea that we were going to bring this solution, this protection to small businesses who don't, most of them don't even know they should be thinking about it. Absolutely. And we started rolling that out and we uh, have grown the business significantly. So how big was the business when we started working? Yeah. So we were, when we started talking, by the way, you guys have been a, a, a great partner wonderful influence um, and, and changed the course of, of how we've been building. We were less than 10 million and I think around nine. And last year we did just a little over 20 million and now we're on track. Um, our low target is 25 million. I think mid targets is uh, 27 and then a high target at 31. So when he talks about those targets, that's how we format businesses based on budgeted spend, based on compensation plans and then overachiever plans. Yes. And, uh, and so, uh, to go from 9 million to, to effectively $30 million in a couple of years and have to transition out a significant partner. Yes. Um, talk about without specifics on, cause he's a great dude. Yeah. But when I met you, neither of you even remotely thought you guys wouldn't be partners a year later. Yeah, no, no way. I, I think when we started, we knew that there were things in the business that needed to change. We were at a break point. And we weren't going to get it without mentorship. And so finding you and Grant as mentors to start helping us make change in the business. And one of the things that I, I think really had a big impact is you, before we even went to your 10X 360, you said, hey, I want you to put down on paper what your personal, professional, financial goals, one year, three year, 10 year. And that was actually a really hard task for me personally, because I had never put it down on paper. I knew I wanted to be successful. Of course, I want a nice house, things like that. But how big of a house? Where do I want my house? Like getting very specific about it. And and beyond that, what really, what what is my legacy? 
What is, what do I really want? And as we both did that, we found that our goals were not the same. You and your partner. Me and my partner. We were going different directions. And so what was important, and, and that was fine, right? That what Where he wanted to go was different than where I wanted to go. But obviously, if, if you know, you have two animals yoked together, they have to pull towards the same goal. Otherwise, they're not going to go anywhere. And so uh, the partnership is like that. So, you know, I think that was a huge a huge help for us to, you know, envision where we needed to go. And and you were a big part of that. And then as you kind of honed in, as you often do, when there's, when there's uh, something not completely aligned, you, you said, Hey, why don't, why don't you buy, you know, buy the partner out? And it, it ended up great because we did it in an amicable way. He's still a good friend. He's now doing what he wants to do. I'm doing what I want to do. And consequently, the business is three times larger because and this is something that we do when we're working with business owners and partners or key employees. Yeah. Sometimes people have the foot on the brake. Sometimes other people have their foot on the gas. Sometimes you have, you know, Grant has a favorite saying, and that is what's, uh, what's worse than one bad general. And he says two good ones <laughs> because you're getting two different pieces of information. That's right. And now you're confused. Right. And then some people listen to the one general, the others listen to the other general. And then now you got this massive disruption and nothing's working. Yeah. And so when you have multiple people trying to go in different directions in business, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't work. No, you, you can only have one steering wheel in the car. You imagine trying to drive a car and, and the navigator's pulling at the wheel while you're pulling at the wheel. It, it, it just doesn't work. And, work. and so when you think about uh, the business that we, we've been working on how to provide a small business owner solution to protect their data, make sure they stay compliant and make sure they have somebody that's, that they can trust that they're working with uh, to, to do that for them. And we're very excited because yeah. we're going to start rolling that out now yeah. for all small businesses. Talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to do to help small businesses protect their data and their business. Well, we're going to help them out with setting up a compliance framework. So they say they know where their risks are and where they need to be compliant. Next, we're going to be helping out with things like monitoring, making sure they have the right tools and the right team. I mean, if you were imagining the military trying to protect, like, let's say a little town in Afghanistan, what would you need? Well, you need a plan, you need um, weapons, which are tools, and then you need personnel, people that can, you know, handle those weapons and protect the town. So those are all the components to really build a cybersecurity infrastructure. And you need to have a team and the tools and the plan. You need it all together to really combat and be successful in this environment. And because we work with thousands of small businesses, we've been able to determine the best way, the most economical way, and the highest valued way to deliver that protection for them, which is why we partnered in the first place is we want to design and build that out. So if I'm a small business owner and I'm like, what does this mean? Does that mean you're going to drop some guys in my office and I'm going to have new employees in here? Um, you're going to come in and inspect things all the time. Like for people who have never actually had their data monitored right, and protected, they may have no idea what it actually looks like to have that happen. So can you walk them through what yeah. that looks like? Yeah, great question. So if if money were no object and you were to hire your own cybersecurity team to, to organize and protect your environment, what would that look like, right? You would need analysts around the clock uh, to, to be able to respond to alerts. You need to have cybersecurity engineering to be able to uh, manage tool sets in place. You need the tools themselves. And then you would need, you need someone that has that high level overview, like a, a ver like a CISO. And so that's really what we're bringing to an organization is that turnkey team and they're, instead of trying to just maybe hire one person in the tools, um, they can have a whole team that specializes in it, that's good at it, that knows what they're doing, and they can bring that team right into their company. And that team gets to know their business processes, how they travel, how they move, uh, where the weak points are in the infrastructure, and really protect what's important in that business. So, so they're going to have physical people there, or do you do this digitally? 100% remote. How literally it's it's a virtual experience. It's, it is, it is. But they're but they're plugging into every aspect of the environment. Um, now, if there are some IT projects associated with that, uh, where there needs to be boots on the ground or, or hands on keyboards, yes, there might be some some of that. But from a cybersecurity perspective, it can essentially be done from from anywhere. Um, all our team is based here in the United States. We've gone through a 
a very rigorous um, hiring process together with that you guys have helped build out. So we've attracted people that are aligned with our mission, our vision, our core values, and they're really giving their all to help organizations. Good. Well, look, I mean, first of all, we're very excited about this new product line we're rolling out. We've been working on it now for probably 18 months. Yeah. Uh, Cardo Ventures is a client, right? Yes. We're not just a partner, we're a client. Um, many of our other clients are clients. Yeah. Even our other partners are clients. Yes. Um, we actually use what we believe in and then we want to deliver it to other business owners. Yeah. To create value in, in their businesses. You know, the, the name of this podcast is Building Billions with Brandon Dawson and in, 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 in the point here in this is we've seen so many businesses that could have made it to a billion, but because the business owners make technical mistakes on things that they didn't even know they should worry about. And there's an old saying, you don't know what you don't know until you realize it. And yeah. then sometimes it's too late. Yeah. So, uh, the, the whole point in this is to educate and explain to business owners that look, if this is something you don't currently have, we're going to put a link in this podcast. And in this episode, and if this is something you don't currently have, we are launching 10X Cyber. And Ephraim is my partner in that business. So we've been acquiring other businesses around the country so that geographically we can bring local representation in too, if we need to support. Absolutely. Yeah. There's sometimes there's things that you just need boots on the ground and then we want to be able to supply that. So look, if you currently don't have any cyber, anything protecting your data, the worst that can happen is you hit this link, 10 and you educate yourself. And the best thing that happens is you find a solution that's cost-effective. You can trust it because it's the same solution I use yeah. and that Grant uses. And uh, we'd love to do business with you, get to know you, build a relationship, and help you build your business on the way to billions the right way. There we go. And we'll give you an update in a year or so on how we take this business from, from 10 million to 30 million to 300 million because... We love to inspire entrepreneurs and business owners and yeah. think bigger, do more, and achieve more for them, their teams, their families by providing a great business uh, that they can be proud of. You know, from my perspective, I want to support impact lives through technology. That's what we're doing. I want to help businesses hit their missions, their goals, and they need to be able to focus on, on that and not have to worry about someone, you know, come, coming and undercutting them in some way. Yep. And there's always someone looking to take advantage of somebody else who's success rate. Ephraim, I've thoroughly enjoyed you. Become, you be, became a client, became a friend, and you became a business partner. And uh, you've always been a joy to spend time around. And I cannot wait to see how large we're going to build this thing and how many lives we can help uh, preserve the value in their business. Yeah, same thing here. I appreciate you so much. Love you, man. And uh, I'm really excited about what we're doing. Awesome, brother. Thank yeah, brother. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening and watching another episode of Building Billions with Brandon. I hope you enjoyed this show. You know, the only way I know is if you leave a comment, uh, write a review, uh, or hit a like button. Otherwise, I don't know what you like to hear or what you want to know about. So thank you for watching another episode. We look forward to seeing you and talking to you on the next episode of Building Billions with Brandon.